Hey, you there. Thank you for watching and welcome to Forge Lines Forever. Today I have a 4v4 custom match here on the most amazing Roxas Spam Generator. So let's go ahead and introduce our teams and our players. Starting off with Team 1 in the north, ending with Team 2 in the south. We'll start with the western player on Team 1. They're working our way clockwise around Team 1 and Team 2's lineup. Starting with the westernmost player here of Chevilly? Cheville? Civ, something like that. I, I, Civ, I don't really know how to pronounce that. Apologies. But they are going Aeon for this match again in Emerald Green as a 1200, but I'm going to call him Civ, I think for short. To the east, we have in Ruby Red the highest rated player on Team 1 and in the game overall by at least 300 to 400 points of rating. It is Little Sid Little as a UEF, as a 2300 rated. To his east, we have in Pac Man Yellow, the 1600 player in Seraphim. It is just Q. And last but not least, a 14 1 on the northeastern side of the map. We're here in Chevy Crimson is the UEF of Flying Pancake. He is a 1300. Is that just Azar? Is that what that is? Just a, another word for Azar is a Flying Pancake instead of a donut? I guess donuts do have a hole in it, and Azar does. Anyway. That is the lineup here for Team 1. We have two UEF, one Seraph, from one Aeon, which means Team 1 lacks cyber and technology. Starting off with the Eastern player on Team 2, and then again, continuing clockwise around their lineup, we have, at least westward, we have in Regal Blue, or Royal Blue, excuse me, per Aspera. He is a cyber for this match as a 1300. In Light Oak Town, blending in, him, blending in with his environment, we have Sui as a cyber, as well as a 1900. He is the highest rated player on Team Ooh. Breaking the mold here for Team 2. We have Yurfmeister. He is a UEF. He is a 1600. And last but not least, for Team 2, on this southeastern corner of the map, we have Dilly Dally. He is a Cybern for this match as a 1500. Over Team 2 side of the map. They almost had an entire team of Cybrans, but like I said, Yurfmeister breaks that mold. It is three Cybrans, one UEF, no Seraphim Tech, no Aeon Tech for Team 2. Team 1 lacks Cyber and Tech only, and for these 8 players on the map, let's take a look at how much Rickham they have to scoop up. Currently sitting at, drumroll somebody please, 9,000 mass, which isn't, again, a terrible amount of mass to have on the map, especially divided by 8, 1.25k mass per player, I think is how that mass scoops up, yep. So again, not a terrible amount, and most of it is in the middle of the map, there are a little bit of pockets kind of circled around it but it is mainly in this main kind of grouping of these rocks here mountains whatever you want to call them in this desert environment and in terms of mechs is what the map definitely lacks in mass and reclaim it does not hold back in mass in mechs i mean taking a look let's say the northern side being team one cutting it right down the middle so this grouping is for team one this grouping is for team two as an example one quad mechs over here a trimex over here Another Trimex over here, another one right there, another one right there, another one right there, a uh, quad mex position over here, and another Trimex. So what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six Trimex positions and two quad mexes with a ton of mexes spammed out around this map. There are, of course, a decent clumping of them in the west and the east, which our players are going to be definitely fighting over. Not a lot in the actual middle of the map, besides these kind of one-offs right here. So let's go ahead, of course, and take a look at what our players are starting to scurry around the map in terms of units and their comms. It does look like there's a little bit of units outbound from Perispera going after this little engineer trying to get a nice little mix. Will it finish it? No. That is definitely unfortunate, but of course the engineer is dead. And that is a casualty here for Flying Pancake. In the west, same kind of strategy here. Just sends a tiny a little mole with a nice little hunter to escort going after as many engineers or anything that they can go after. There is a countermeasure with a snoop and a striker, which of course will take out that mole very easily. If we can actually hit it, missed. They finally hit it. What is that? The fourth shot that it actually took to hit that uh, little tiny unit. That is, of course, the simulated projectiles in this game. Coming to uh, a nice little example there for everybody watching. In the north, we have again that hunter still alive. Is now being hunted by a striker, but the hunter is faster, so that striker will not catch up soon. 
at war at all unless that unit continues to make some turns and not move in a line. Do you see that Team 2 Zerfmeister has claimed the middle of the map on the western side of here and Dilly Dally moving in to assist. So it looks like it's going to be a 2v1 in favor of Team 2 on the western side with Team 1's other western player of Los Little taking the middle of the map going for the reclaim. Next door to him is Just Q. And on the eastern side, of course, it is Flying Pancake, which looks like, eh, I wouldn't say that's a 2v1. Because Team 1's Just Q could easily shift in and try to intercept Sui. So it is going to be pretty much a 2v2. The only player, quote unquote, not directly facing an opponent is going to be Team 2's Meister and Team 1's Little Sid Little. Of course, he's going for the reclaim, so I wouldn't be surprised if he shifts westward afterwards. Reduce if front lines are being established. And Team 2 is getting the bulk of the mexes on the western side, actually dipping into a couple of mexes for Team 1. This is actually Team 1's technically that I gave to them initially just to kind of quantify how many mexes each side of the map has. We have a couple of land upgrades and air upgrades going on here for, looks like, Team 1 and Team 2. We do see that that upgrade has now been started in the air department. I'm uh, sorry, that is the... I'll just go check. Probably the better way to see it. Yeah, the air upgrade has been started here for Sri in the south. And Just Q in the north has a T2 land facility online. We're getting those Ilshis front and center very, very quickly. Team 1 is the only team that has Aeon and Seraphim Tech. Team 2 is the only one that has Seraphim Tech. Sorry, Cybran Tech. And Team 1 and Team 2 do share UEF. So there will be fat boys running around. There will be, of course, the glorious Colossus and Monkey and Crab and Chicken and all of the goodness that we'd love to see in all of these games. Europe Meister getting a nice little frontline position and a nice little T2 mix as well. A very far forward T2 mix to help cut down on the mass requirements for his units on the front, front, front line. And we do see a little bit of outcropping here from Team Who's Western player of Dilly Dally? I don't know if it'll be that beneficial as time goes on. The calm here for Shiv does have T2 tech online, so not offensive geared, more defensive slash utility geared. But nonetheless, that does give a chunk of hit points to aid in the survivability of said commander. We are seeing kind of a little bit of a mirroring going on with Team 1 taking a little bit more of the eastern side for them, and Team 2 taking the western side a little bit more. A couple of bombers inbound going after this group of units that didn't actually end up dying, so never mind, just scratch what I just said. In the mid-east, we have a large amount of units inbound from Just Q going after Sui. Sui moving in his commander, and a couple of units from Los a Little coming in to assist, as well as Sui's units from the west hovering over to assist. Facilities being spammed up and more and more units coming online, of course, as time goes on. T2 land upgrades are being upgraded very hastily here in this game. And I wouldn't be surprised to see T3 here shortly. We do see, of course, engineers are being spammed up to get that air facility online. T2 land online here for Yurfmeister. I think that's the only land upgrade finish here. Nope, nope, there's another one over here for Team 1's Eastern player of Flying Pancake. So... Like I said, those upgrades are going out very, very quickly here. Not even 10 minutes on the clock. Just to get, of course, a nice presence on well, any part of the map at this point. There is a little bit of Mexis just taken offline here for Team 2. There is a little bit of just denial of Mexis for the time being. We'll see if that is uh, going to stay that way. I highly doubt it. But it could just be that Europe Meister is distracted with other things going on. We do see the Dilly Dally pushing very far forward north. We do see that PD emplacement will shove him back for the time being in the east. I thought I saw a gun upgrade done, and it is done for Perispera and a stealth as well. And slowly pushing back, flying pancake. He does have a lot of units guarding him. There is some assistance from his teammate of just Q from the west, so he's not entirely alone. And it is at this point, all on purposes, a 1v1. Looks like it's gone from a 2v2 in the east to a 1v1 in the east, a 1v1 in the middle. And a 2v1 in the west with the little Sid, little commander, retreating back to base. So it looks like he's not going to stay on the front lines for long. I don't know if that's the best decision to make. He really needs to push back or at least help push back. Yurfmeister, of course, he's in his quote-unquote side of the map. 
And that force is denying mexes for not only himself, but possibly also his teammate if that was going to be under his control. T3 air has been started for just Q. Wow, he's upgraded very quickly. T3 air has been started. That's going to very much assist in the air department as, of course, this game continues to unfold. Corsairs are being established here for space, so he's not going straight for T3. Which, I mean, just depends on what he can get with the Corsair bombardment. If he can get a calm kill, that could be a huge thing. Or if he can't, not the best decision. But again, you got to take some risks in the game to get a re reward. We do see T2 land is now online for pretty much everybody on Team 1. Team 2, I think, would be sitting in the same boat. T2, T2. No T2 land over here for Sui, at least not down here. And nothing down here. So possibly T2 will be finished over in the east here shortly. We are seeing a couple of Yenzin not opting for the Ilshis. Yenzin a little bit cheaper, of course. But I do see a couple of Ilshis running around, to be fair. There are, of course, Yenzin to just assist with numbers. In the west, we do see the bombardment here from Team 1's Aeon player of Shiv going after Europemeister's position. There are a lot of Team 1 PD, that being one of them, actually, and a couple of Riptides moving in. They are, of course, rapid-fire units. Not a lot of damage individually per shot, but they can rip through Team 1 units decently quickly, as, obviously, Tin 4 Auroras don't help with the whole ripping through nonsense just because they don't really have a lot of hit points to begin with, but they can still rip through units, at least Team 1, at any degree. Shift in the east here. We do see a large movement to the west, and it has allowed P Flying Panky to get a little bit closer in. That could be a strategy. Allow the opponent to come in a little bit further in and then wipe him off the face of the map. But it is a just jostling back and forth. Because, again, if one force moves, it opens a hole for another force to move in, which moves another force in to cover that, which moves another force in to cover that. And you get the point. E3 air should pretty much be done here shortly. It's at 57%, so it's making its way. T3 not online yet for Sui. Not even started for Sui. Well, again, like I said, the longer that division happens where Team 1 can get T3 air and Team 2 does not have that, it could be soul-crushing. could be the game-winning move. It could not be. It just depends on how either team responds or utilizes what they have at their advantage when they have it. We do see Dilly Dally has T2 air online as well now. And Eurofmeister has started the T3 land upgrade. Of course, going for those Percy's earlier on are always, always beneficial. Not really a lot of upgrades for T. Oh, nope, there's one for here. And nothing for here as of yet. So there is some focus to go for T3. But of course, we're still in the 12-minute stage. So we're starting to approach the mid-game point where T3 units start to be the main line, or at least start being produced and then become the main line unit. For our players in the east large in large engagement ensuing a lot of forces from first bear are very spread out while the ones from flame pancake are highly condensed you see a couple of flapjacks running around that's probably not a good idea even in the face of semantics they are team one units but they can rip apart these more indirect fire weapon systems obviously the comms nearby as well which isn't going to help the flapjacks survivability there I don't really know what's going on with this kind of movement west and east and west and east. I don't really know what's going on with that. But this group of Mexes is now either taken offline or has now been denied for Team 2. Which, again, like I said, these Mexes have been denied for Team 1 for a while. So it's kind of just a nice little, say, hey, you did it to us. We'll do it to you kind of payback. P3 land is done here for Dilly Dally. And now we have, of course, also has T2 air going for T3. So we're possibly going to have one, if not two, air players for Team 2. In Team 1, of course, we have the one at the minimum who has T3 air online going for those engineers and the PGENs as soon as possible. T3 land online here for Little Sid Little and T3 possibly soon here for Shiv in the west. We do see he's continuing to push in and slowly eat away at the forces over here. There's not that much for either team in that regard. The only questionable, not questionable, the only concerning thing here for Europe Meister is, is he too far forward? Because there could be a scenario where Lewis and Little sends forces down south and then cuts immediately west and isolates him to any sort of supplies, to any sort of transports, and just kills him off outright. But in this game where there's a 4v4 custom match, it's not a ladder match. So, I mean, things are divided decently even it's a 93 percent nothing's perfect of course which is how of course the optimization goes whether it was made 
by the players or made by some automation. We'll see what team ends up winning one way or the other. Of course, that's one of the reasons why we love watching these videos is because like, ooh, who's going to win? We know some of the players. We might not know some of the players. And just see what strategies they employ. This map is essentially just barren. It's it is a tiny bit of environment to worry about in the middle of the map, but this is inconsequential. These are a little bit more consequential, but not by much. This is just a flat. I'll get a better view of the map so you can see what I'm talking about. It is essentially just a flat map that's it like there's really not there's really nothing to it i don't even think there's a lot of divots in it as well there's really no oh there's a little tiny hill that the pd can't fire over it's essentially just flat 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 as flat can be a couple of air scouts over the top to just get a little bit of constant vision and intelligence going here for just q that's being pumped out of the t3 air facility no nope, i guess it transferred over to uh ASF as we speak and the air grid experience expanded fun as we speak as well or I speak as well and possibly you listen or possibly you speak who knows you could be yelling at the TV or the phone or the tablet or the whatever about either me casting something wrong or a player doing something wrong whatever the case may be kind of like a uh, sports game that's kind of how I imagine I mean that's where esports kind of comes from at least a little bit but anyway you see again more flapjacks running around not in the front lines you can see they're just not as effective, I, A, while they're moving, and B, they don't really have a lot of hit points. So not great to constantly have them moving back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But right now we see Ilshi's transferred over to Flying Pancakes, so a lot of forces from Just Q shifting over that direction. You can tell that he's sif shifting, well, I can speak correctly, over to T3 Air. That's going to be his main focus. T2 Air is still online and now going for T3, so now Sweet is getting into that air department in the proper role of t3 air we'll see how that works for them and remember that uh movement thing that i mentioned that uh melissa little could do well europe meister is doing the exact opposite which is going the exact route that i said just he's doing instead of sweet lots of wall sections being established just to curtail the movement but unfortunately here for melissa little that's a decent force and that force actually is ignoring going after Lewis a little and is going after the eastern side here for just Q. This is very interesting. There's a large force inbound or a decent force inbound from, from Flying Pancakes moving into intercept. Paris, Paris, Com. There's a lot of forces inbound to inse ins inspect, intercept those, and there's more forces up here. It could be a situation where Flying Pancakes very isolated over here. We'll just see how the response from the other three players on Team 1 and deal with this whether they are successful or not we do see of course a couple of pdr in this space there are some titans that are starting to rip them apart there aren't any really percy's in this mix at all which means the damage the instantaneous air flow is instantaneous damage is not going to be as bad but you can still see these units can shoot through defensive positions it just depends on how much time they have to do so and like all this deal she is just slowly eating away at that riptide who's not really noticing Oh, okay, I think they noticed. We also have another one standing here as well. A couple of units over the west here for a little said little. Slowly, of course, closing the gap. And we do see some reinforcements inbound from Dilly Dally shifting eastward to again, of course. Either plug a hole that he suspects that is happening or just assist and help push in even further. Left drone is done, done, done. For a little said little getting some more engineering on board that chassis. And I'm assuming he's going for... Actually, I think that's a T2 engineer. Uh... I think that's a, I think that's the left drone or the right drone. Yeah, right drone. It's going up decently quick, so I would presume that it's that, but you can never be 100% uh, correct unless you actually see the words on screen, which again, I have not found a way to do that. Don't know why it's not happening. I really do apologize about that. Hopefully I can figure out how I did it when I get back home on my standard machine that I do videos that all of you have come to expect me to do them on essentially. Why would I do it on another machine? Unless I'm traveling, which in this instance I am. Anyway. These forces continuing to just push, 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 push. And it's really being driven by Team 2. I mean, it's constantly back and forth. You can see that all the forces from Flying Pancake are coming to Team 2, which means the mass is on Team 2 side of the map, which means the reclaim is going to them, which means that's more mass, more mass equals more units upgrades that sort of thing and it does take a toll of course as the game goes on 
if that reclaim total gets very, very high. Of course, a way to counter that is just spam mass extractors, mass fabricators, or SACUs, or RAS upgrades. You can't really spam them, but you kind of can. At least if you're not a Seraphim. In the West here, things are starting to cool down decently enough. There, I like how there's just a couple of loyalists that walked to a wall and went, yeah, not worth it. And then they just walk off. <laughs> like, mm, I'm good. Another group of forces stacking up here for your Meister. Looks like those are the ones that actually pulled back and went south. They just went back the way they came. It would have been faster or safer, I should say, to go south and then west, but maybe had things or build order, not build orders, but move orders, whatever. There are now a couple of those long-armed Percy's standing watch over those units, and a couple of Percy's now standing, waiting to be given orders for Lil Salil. Looks like he just might engage anyways. Again, the only problem is there's a lot of T1, T2 units, not really a lot of the bulky units that they are very adaptive dealing with. It isn't one-shots on those Riptides. I don't know if some of them have veterans or not, which no, it looks like they don't need veterans to survive one hit. You can see that those shots are being fired at one at one another. It's a UEF on UEF crime going on over there. They just can't come to a decision about what color scheme is the best. We do see another movement out here for Perispera. A lot of these players, especially the eastern half, are really pushing in, pushing back, trying to do as much as they can to really poke through the defenses. And Team 1's being a little bit more defensive. So on the offensive, it has given Team 2 a little bit more of the share of the mexes, or at least denying mexes at a minimum. Which is always nice, because more mass than your opponent means you can eventually overwhelm them. Not necessarily, but just the, the trend line usually favors the players slash uh, teams that have more mass. Usually, not always, but usually. We're now approaching the 20 minute stage of this game. So far, nobody has died at 20 minutes. It's very surprising. So it is still a 4v4 game here. Team 1 sitting at almost the... actually was sitting at almost the exact same mass for Team 2, but Team 2 is now leading a tiny smidgen. Not by much, about 25, 30 mass or so. So it can, again, make a difference. But as of right now, it's not dead even, but pretty close to dead even. And now we see a pushback here from Flying Pancake in the east. And at the same time, please let me know down in the comments who you think is going to currently win this game at 20 minutes and 50 seconds on the clock. Thank you so very much for watching. To about the halfway point in the video and of course thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you i really do appreciate it for those of you of course like the video and subscribe to the channel and share this video with anyone everyone especially your friends and another thank you especially to you is that just another engineer over there what was that i don't know what that was i didn't catch that at the last second but it looked like that engineer reclaimed something but it looked like an engineer but i could be, have been wrong you see a couple of units in the east here, a couple of rhinos. There is a Titan here. T1 PD does get finished before the engineer dies, but so will help save maybe another mech. Going to be not super actually close because that rhino doesn't uh, continue firing. And now we see these units pushing back. The force has been dealt with by Team 1. They've taken significant damage, but not a terrible amount. And now they're starting to feel the pain. At least Team 2 is a little bit of being pushed back. There are some ASF sitting here, definitely, yep, okay, I was going to say, definitely want to move those just in case the units come nearby, which they essentially did. And now, again, they're going after this group of forces. I feel like they should be going after more infrastructure, because Team 2 has been targeting that extensively, just slowly chipping away at the eco. Team 1, again, just going for all the units, which you can do, of course, with no defenders means you don't have to worry about anybody shooting back at you. But the further deep you go into enemy territory, the easier it is for units to come off the assembly lines and go right back to battle, or go right into battle, I should say. There are a couple of mixes that are going to be taken offline, so that's 18 mass a second that Perispera is losing. And that will, again, slowly keep Team 1 in this game in terms of the difference between both of their eco per second. You see a facility is now offline, unfortunate, but nothing too worrisome. There are a decent amount of bricks and now Percy's just stacking up in this hole that was artificially or whatever the word for not artificial naturally occurring or built or happened or whatever. We have a couple of uh, it looks like a missile. So it's, uh, it was yeah, it was weaving back and forth. I was like, that's not an artillery for sure. So a PD emplacement is taken offline. There is a decent amount of T2 PD in this mix, and more shields are being built. Here, Meister, of course, worried about his investment in the mass department. 
wants to make sure they are protected. Will he finish it in time? No. But the Loyalists move in to assist with the redirect systems. The Buzzco doesn't fire the, or shoot the missile down. And another missile now shifting southward, noticing that uh, it's not really that worth it to continue firing missiles at a target that uh, is not immune, but pretty much immune to them. This group of forces has now been dealt with, but still this group of forces looks like they shifted northward and just rampage in the front lines now. All of those PDE are coming offline. All of the infrastructure that was there is just dead and gone at this point. There's still a couple of things left, but not much. It really opens the hole for either team to engage, mainly Team 1. Again, similar things are happening with the lines being drawn in the virtual sand up there. In the middle, a couple of whalers move forward. There's not a lot of AA nearby, so we'll get tons of damage done. There is a couple of flat cannons, but there's no T3, so... The range, of course, is a little bit better on the than what I remember, or from what I can think of off the top of my head. And that's not really the best engagement here for those Percy. They're kind of getting whittled down a little bit by all of those bricks, but of course they fire a lot of shots, especially in large numbers, because large numbers mean more shots, more shots means more damage, more damage equals more kills, and more kills means less things are firing back at you. We're trying to attack you with a melee weapon, which I don't think there's anything in the game besides stomping on anybody with an experimental that counts as melee. Yeah, I don't think so. It's all guns or ranged weapons instead of uh, melee weapons like swords and punches and whatnot. I do like this little formation of bangers surrounding Dewey Dally, just making sure he's protected by any sort of gunship attack. Now, Strat Bombers, not going to help against that, but... At least he has something, which is, again, always better than nothing. Better to have 100 mass per second than 10 mass per second or 0 mass per second, which is not actually possible in this game because you have to have at least 1 mass per second with your comm. But that's if you're alive and not dead. It's also that. You see in the middle here, Percy's, again, still stacking up. And I do like this, that there are already engineers on station for Europe Meister to get the reclaim. So that way that all of that mass invested, or at least most of it, comes back, is respent on the exact same thing, and just slowly eating away at Lewis and Lewis Reserves. Love to see that in this game. Engineering is very, very important, getting those engineers out to reclaim, to assist, to do anything that they can. Because even though most, not all, but most of the engineers are non-combatants, you got to have them aggressively do something. And reclaiming is one thing that they can do. Do like the radar station on the underneath the shield here for Civ in the west. I would like to see a radar station in the middle as well, which is what Team 2's Sweet has done. And it's actually on Team One side of the map, which is not really that defended. There's a lot of AA. Not a lot of ground-to-ground uh, -ground defenses besides just the roaming bands of bricks. They can easily get overwhelmed, but they're trying to counter air at least a little bit, which I do love the aggressive AA creep always very entertaining to watch that in the north Percy's continuing to fire at Percy's but look at how much they've pushed back all of those units dead between here and there are essentially underneath team 2's control and all that reclaim and actually most of it to be fair is going into the hands of Europe Meister and Dilly Dally and I thought I saw an experimental build here at some point I don't know where it went oh there is one under con oh there is one that's where it is it is Team 2's Europe has a Fat Boy online producing a second one as we speak. In the Northwest, no experimentals as of yet. Definitely not the best place to build it up there just in case it gets overwhelmed. So, smart to put it a little bit further back. Any sort of other experimentals here for Team 1? No. All possible Fat Boy here. All possible Fat Boy is online here or coming online for Swee. They're not Swee, Little said Little. And in the East, SMD and nothing else so again as a reminder team one has two of their four players being uef which means the direct fire experimentals are limited to the colossus and the chicken team two is limited to the monkeys and the crab so it's 2v2 in that regard but the monkey is significantly cheaper but it's nice to be able to spam those things up at a moment's notice let's say at a moment's notice but pretty close to that now we have a couple of spearheads running around again. Similar system to the flapjacks, except they pump out four missiles at a time, if I'm not mistaken. One, two, three, 
Maybe it's three. I thought it was four. Oh, the was taking <laughs> brick taken offline. Very unfortunate. That's just free damage, essentially. Yeah, it is three, not four. I thought it was four. Huh. Never mind. In the east, again, skirmish is still occurring, but there's a large concerted effort from Flapjack. Flapjack. Flying Pancake to continue to push on this eastern side. And really keep her spare back. He had that nice little wall of defenses that were just ripped apart and hasn't been able to recover since then. The middle is definitely concerning for Team 1's is it essentially eastern player in the north, or not north, but uh, mid-east position. This is a nice little staging area to move either east or north or even actually shift west to go after Wilson Little. Now we see the forces being ambushed, or the defenses being ambushed. Lots of bricks inbound. We do see a couple of flapjacks there moving in, as well as a significant amount of Percy's that are hastily moving in to intercept. Those bricks are going... Okay, I think we've done enough. Okay, see you. Bye. Griffmeister builds another fat boy. That's number two for him. That's... It's starting to get a little bit concerning for Team 1. That's a lot of indirect firepower nonsense. I think it's... Three fat boys is when you need to be really concerned, and then I think it's five where it's like, okay, this this needs to be dealt with immediately, kind of the, you know, the critical mass stage sort of thing. There is a monkey online for Team 2, Dilly Dally, running around this wall section to push back Team 1 quite significantly. You can see this fire base that is now isolated from the rest of Civ's base. He did make it out of dodge, though, with T3 engineering suite and one... Of course, one gun upgrade being the speed and the shield, the regular one. First one coming online. Lots of PD being built to defend. It will help, but the issue is, of course, they can shift north and then east and go after those little position. It looks like he's lost a couple of facilities. I don't know if that was reclaim or that was... Uh, that might have been control K, actually, just because that facility is sitting next to a mass extractor. You see Fat Boy is now online. Lots of engineering drone stations coming online as well. Very interestingly enough, it's it can help. I just don't like stacking them that much just due to the fact that it's just not that great in that sense just because an easy couple of artillery and they're all gone. So it's not the best scenario to do, but sometimes that's just kind of all you got. And in the middle here for Team 1, they are pushing back against Sui. He is getting a Monkey Lord online, which could be a little bit dangerous for this group of forces. But it's still in the yellow, so it is a little bit of time before that thing gets finished. But it looks like they're going to just shift westward, actually, and not go south and go after Dilly Dally's little group of mechs over there. We'll see if that ends up working here for him. As this force is moving in northward, so they might try to hook maneuver around and go after the fat boy. It could work, but there's now a new one here. So two of them in close proximity, able to bombard units. Very, very dangerous for any sort of units moving in to intercept. And it looks like they're going to actually shift east anyways and go after this uh, group of forces here with the commander of Sweet sitting here to just kind of hang out. We'll see if that ends up working for Team 1's forces. I don't think it will because that Monkey Lord is now online. So it's kind of uh, not looking good here for Team 1 in this regard. We'll see if it ends up working out, but I highly doubt it. It's just one of those things where it was just bad timing. Maybe had they rushed that Fat Boy, fat boy the Monkey Lord, it would have worked, but I don't know if it would have worked in the grand scheme of things sort of thing. Apologies for the jump cut or the cut there. I noticed that the audio was not being recorded for some reason, so I will have to investigate why it just stopped randomly. So I do apologize for that, but I had to go back and get to this point again. So hopefully there's not a huge disruption there, but obviously, as we've seen, the monkey was taken out, but the forces were destroyed anyway. So at the worst of it, Team 2 Sweet loses a monkey lord and a couple of PGMs, a couple of one. And the best, he gets a lot of mass from his opponent of Flying Pancake and can now then rebuild said Monkey and the P-Gen at the same time. You see in the west that Fat Boy has now fallen back. He's taken significant damage, most likely due to these uh, not the fighter bombers overhead as the game just slowly doesn't want to work properly for some stupid reason. 
in the Nathas land. They take out the first bad point. Asif's coming a little bit too late. Unfortunately, they will lose that fat boy. There is another one over here, of course. That would be definitely nice to replenish the old one, but that's already been there. Third fat boy. Nope, third fat boy has not been started. A lot of coverage for that SMD. Makes me think there's a nuke somewhere for Team 1. Is it a possibility? Yes. Will it be the case? No, it is not the case. They just want to make sure that uh, that SMD is covered. No SMD over here. So, again, not really a worry something here for team one or for team two because team one doesn't have a nuke but if they did oh well that's actually interesting i didn't realize that that's a thing well starting nuke silo construction here for your so we built an smd almost loaded it and went you know i'm gonna build my own nuke and call it a day so that's what he's doing right now we'll see how that works out for him in that regard i mean there is not smds over here there is an smd over here there is an SMD over there, and there is, so the western bases are vulnerable to nukes. The eastern ones are not. But again, you could target Swee, not Swee, you could target Lilith and Little, and Shiv at a minimum. So that's two of the four players. That's, you know, 50%. That's not bad in terms of a uh, percentage. Lots of T3 artillery raining down from all of these trebuchets. Just going after a tiny little T2 max. Not lasting much longer, though. It's almost on its. Uh, yeah, I was going to say it's almost on the way out, I should say. There is a crab and a monkey coming online here for Dilly Dally moving northward. It's really going to punch a hole in the wall section that was established by Will Sidlo. It's not going to feel good over there. We do see, of course, still the Percy versus Brick Warfare continuing to just envelop the eastern side of the map here. Lots of flapjacks. Actually, no, those are spearheads. Apologies. Still pumping out tons and tons of missiles. It keeps Team 2's forces on the move, and it keeps, of course, Team 1 forces on the move because there are counter missile launchers online as well, helping to, again, kind of even the odds in the missile indirect and direct fire operations. Lots of radar stations. One Omni, one T2, one Omni over here, one Omni over here. Everybody on Team 1 has an Omni. Team 2 has none. I guess no no Omnis, so... Huh. I don't know. I mean, you really only need maybe two. It is nice to have a backup of a third, but a fourth one way back there, not that important. If that one goes down, it's not the worst thing. But the crab is leading the engagement against this fat point. A bunch of Percy's waiting for that crab to breach over the walls. There is a monkey who are going to shift east and then north to go around said wall, but it does look like that uh, crab is going to... Oh, that's the wrong button. Crab is going to be pushed back for the time being and not allow, not be allowed to entry into Little Sid Little's domain. Missile launchers outbound, tries to go after that. Bat Boy doesn't get the kill, but kills off a Percy, so that's something. Not great for the mass cost of the missile, but there was a nice attempt to go for that uh, Bat Boy. It was an attempt, it wasn't successful, but it was an attempt, so again, something's better than nothing. In the east, those numbers here for Team 2 are thinning out. Per Espera does have a crab online, though, so while his number of units are depleting, the quality of his units is improving, at least the average of which, which means that this group of forces will be dealt with quite quickly here. If it was a monkey, I'd be more concerned, but with, of course, 110,000 hit points on board, a lot of hit points for even Percy's to chew through, so it's going to take a minute to really just push that unit backward here for Team 1. And this bombardment over here to the west here from all of these trebuchets, not trebuchets, yeah, trebuchets. I keep thinking those are demolishers, but that's UDF continuing to again pummel this shield grid. There's a lot of missiles where, of course, that's where they struck from. And that fat boy trying to do its best to force back this fat boy. So it's just constant artillery fire one way or the other in the west. The two other experimentals running around on that western side. I have not seen a Colossus yet, but there is one being constructed here for Shiv, so that is going to be online here shortly. No chickens as of yet here for team. Oh, well, okay, never mind. Just you just built a chicken, so never mind. Forget what I just said. Or tried to say, actually. And in the east, you can see that red wave moving ever so slightly south where there is another crab. Two crabs. Not a great uh, situation here for flying pancakes, but of course, he does have a fat boy back here slowly eating away at those 110,000 hit points. And there goes one of them. That one is dead and gone. Now that Fatboy's going to target the second grab. 
And how is that nuke going here for your... F it is done and is currently loading. Does Team 1 know about it? That would be a no. They know about the SMD and where the comm is, but they don't know about the actual nuke. Which again could be the make or break thing here for Team 2 to win this game. Or at least open a door at a minimum. We do see that everybody is still alive in this game at 35 minutes on the clock here. Nobody has died. There's been significant losses in units and mass and all that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, no one's dead, which is a huge benefit to both teams, especially, again, the later stages of the game. D3 artillery has been started here for flying pancakes to the Easter. And, yes, it has been started. It is the Duke and Ek. Maybe he just has a lot of mass in his bar, but I feel like that's going up very... He has a lot of mass in his bar. I was like, that's going up very quickly. And that's just because he has mass in it to spend, which is, again, a good thing to spend mass on. Will it work? We'll see. But we'll just have to uh, continue to watch, and I will have to cast and whatnot to see who wins this game. I don't remember. I know the game works, but uh, that's it. This guy just AFK says a little, some little. Again, I don't know one way or the other. He could have had to go somewhere, and he just queued up a construction of a Colossus and had to come back. No, he isn't. Okay, so no, that is a uh, fact that that player is not AFK. Just obviously, he responded. You can see now that the game is shifting from a north v south lineup to more of a kind of northeast versus southwest. You can see that kind of middle line slowly shifting, you know, clockwise. We'll see if that will impact the main bases of these uh, Northwestern and Southeastern players. But again, time will tell. There is an ASF fight that possibly will be rooming here. We haven't seen a big one. We've seen tiny little skirmishes, of course, but nothing, you know, 100 plus ASFs involved sort of thing. There is a monkey just holding position here. There is a group of mechs is now offline. So Shiv is losing even more mass per second. Now we see there's a break in the wall section, and two crabs are moving in to go after said fat boys. There's a lot of parachutes here, but they can only do so much. Percy's moving in to close the gap. Percy's going to stand on the other side of the wall and go, no, you cannot come in. Entry is barred. Go away. You can see that artillery fire raining in. No. Nope. And that crab is not going to stop. Of course, our deaths due to the uh, crash damage of that grab. Now we see missiles are outbound going after Mexes, going after Com, going after something. There are some Team D hastily being built. Looks like the missiles are going for the Com. The Com's shield will hold. Of course, there was the shield actually on board the Com, which would have been fine, but there are, of course, volcanoes that were built. You delay or at least distract a couple of the missiles. Not all of them, but some of them. We do see T3 artillery started here for Just Q and for Dilly Dally. Looks like it's right here for Dilly Dally. And of course this one is the here. Oh, right, right. I said I was gonna start a Oh no it's right there. Just staring at me in the face because that's where it normally stares at me is in the face. Fat boy under construction here for Europe Meister once again and that nuke is about to load. It will be the first nuke of the game once it does fire. And not the fighter bombers come in and help assist the Colossus with a kill on the crab. But I think the crash damage killed off the Colossus. So it's just a trade there. And now Team 2 can scoop up all of that mass. Definitely unfortunate here for Team 1's Colossus. But of course they did kill two units or two experimental. So that is a small price to pay. Large amounts of Fat Boy Fire will kill off this Fat Boy here from Yurkmeister. And all these units are just getting rained by just bombarding forces. It's not looking good here. You can start seeing the cleansing wave kind of happening here. As the units behind them try to go, uh, uh, we can't, we, we, we can't travel through buildings like you can. So, please come back. The Percy's go, oh, okay, this is our opportunity on the other side of the wall, and they go, get, um, there are a couple of parachutes trying to stave off death for a couple of those, uh, Bad boys, but we do see the ASFs coming and just go, no, no way this for you. No, no way this for you. And in the east, the attack still continues, and it looks like a Team 1 is losing a little bit of steam, but they still have that fat boy. Crab just got killed off. Lots of dead Percy's once again, lots of dead crabs as well. 
team to Southeastern play first spur. Still pumping out experimentals to hold off death and getting some SACUs for some eco. He's still staying in there at almost 400 mass a second. And artillery is now online here for flying pancakes, and he's not targeting Perispera. He's targeting Sui, who I mean, has T3 air online. Hasn't actually gone for more expansion on the air grid, just a single thing, which, again, can spam units very quickly, but it just means that there's one item, and if you lose the one item, that's kind of it. Chunk of Engineers just gets blasted apart here by that artillery piece. Pigeons are going to be built over here to the west to assist with uh, keeping the energy eco alive for Sui, but that's nah, not going to be great. And that fat boy pressure continuing to mount. T2 artillery also spammed up as well to assist. We see fat boys moving into counter. But it is a 3v1 with a lot of Percy's and a huge chunk of parachutes to assist with protecting said investment. So I guess little said little strategy is just go spam shields and spam fat boys. I guess is that the strategy here for little said little on that north the northwestern side. And there's another Colossus done here for Shiv, so it's gonna be able to try to blitz on pass. Another one is done as well. There is a crab. Will it get into range of that Colossus? It looks like it will. Looks like it's gonna just sit there and take the shots, which I think it will still favor the crab, but just barely. And that nuke should be ready by now. If I haven't already noticed that it fired, it probably no. Oh no, it just it just finished low. Oh no, it did just finish uh, firing. I should say, not uh, loading. Ka boom! I did miss the uh, sound cue. Apologies for that. And it was staring at me in the face. Why I couldn't find? I was like, it just actually launched that nuke, and this is really gonna put a hamper on Team One's ability to fight back in this western side. Colossus did go down. Crab barely alive. We can see just the dead, dead units. How much reclaims on the map? I wonder. Two hundred and twenty-five thousand mass. That's enough to make anything, and then some. And, of course, most of it is where you would expect over here. And over here. What is this? Oh, the artillery got taken out. That's definitely unfortunate here for Dilly Dally. That T3 artillery. Online looks like it took out a chunk of the air grid for Just Q. But he's almost done with his artillery piece. That's almost in the green here shortly. I don't think there's any more online for Team 2. Just more fat boys, more fat boys, more nukes. And that's it. Fat boy continuing to push in and go after this group of structures that, again, was attempted to go after the first time and then ended in failure. There's one monkey that's almost dead. Another monkey just got built, which this amount of Percy should be enough, but now there's two monkeys coming in from the east, and that uh, fat boy is, uh, like we say in the business, dead as a door now. It's going to try to get out of range, but it's going to get caught up to very quickly. Once the lasers train on it, that is a dead, dead unit. We do see the Percy's going to go out and meet that monkey lord the monkey lord trying to stay underneath the protection of the shield but the power of the percy trying to pierce through oh there it goes the shield is offline and that monkey lord is not going to survive much longer the shield and then it would be a good target but the percy's are losing numbers very quickly that boy is going down targeting that monkey lord the monkey lord now being targeted by those percy's and a couple of T2PD servers trying to help out. And there are two cannons, but they're trying to do the best they can. The monkey does go down, but there are two more remaining anyways. So that would be a nice bump of mass for three to scoop up. One fat boy does get eliminated, most likely by uh, probably missiles. Granted, the fact that there's not a lot. I mean, there's a lot of reclaim in general, so it's kind of hard to tell one way or the other. The two fat boys online for Europe Meister will probably slow this roll at least a little bit. Another Colossus is dead for Shiv. And he's producing them decently quickly, but he's getting a lot of mileage out of them, unfortunately. And that nuke is uh, loading not as quickly as the first one did, but it's still loading at the bare minimum. Another fat boy. That's just going to be fat boy on fat boy on fat boy on fat boy soon enough. Artillery has been started once again here for flying pancakes. For fire pancake. He's a one sing. He's a singular pancake. So soon to be three artillery pieces, at least two so far for Just Q and for 
flying pancake. And of course, the base has been rebuilt quite significantly here, SMD as well. But uh, the, essentially, the hole has been torn. And I don't know if all the pieces will go back together like Humpty Dumpty. But they just didn't come back entirely. Satellite online for Flying Pancake, so he has artillery and satellites online. A deadly combo here for Team 1. Is Team 2 building anything nefarious or spicy in the back line? I don't see anything here. didn't see anything there. Just more Fat Boys, more Fat Boys, more Fat Boys, more Fat Boys, more Fat Boys. And here... Oh, that's a bad time for the shields to go offline. And Dilly Dally is uh, not feeling well because his... Uh, Fuel emitters are gone, so... Oh, that's a good pigeon to take out with the laser. The laser gets a nice little burst in before the artillery. It looks like the satellite's going to take out the... Oh, like, I was going to say the Colossus, but the commander. And it does look like Mass has been gifted over to Flying Pinky to finish the artillery piece, looks likely. If Just Q just finishes his artillery piece, he's going to start a another one? Or just T3? No, just T3. Structures. Three Fat Boys down here, two Fat Boys here for Team 1. The tides are turning in the mobile artillery warfare game, but the pigeons are going down for Dilly Dally, which means the power reserves are slowly being eaten away. There's a recall order out for Team 2. They're thinking about leaving. No one's been... No, don't tell me that... No, don't tell me that... Uh, there goes. Don't tell me that yellow line is going to stick there, but another chunk of that grid goes down. There's been two air players, main one and secondary one. Fat Boy's continuing to press, or at least try to hold off Team 1, so press back on Team 1. Sat on that satellite. Teleporter is done for Swee, so we'll see the Telemazer here shortly. Gun is done. He has to go for laser next. He's not going to go for anything else. Yep, there is the laser. And the best targets to go for would be the remainder of the air grid or this position over here. I don't see a lot of PD, so probably this one first. And then this one. There are... Um, PD being built as we speak by a little, little underneath the coverage of those Seraphim shields. Lots of mass being sent to a couple of players here by both teams. Four other players on set team and there goes the laser is completed. Teleport has not been activated as of yet but we're going to keep track of him just to make sure he has no upgrades on board that commander so he's going to get a lot of bonus hit points very quickly if he can not just receive a thousand shots per second. This position here for Europemeister not feeling good. Fields are down. The nuke is about to load and launch 81,000 masks with that first nuke. And the shield pops back online at the last second. Ooh, just fire it immediately. There's no time to waste with that nuke. You have to fire it. Even if it just gets shot down, you have to have to fire it. Still no teleport inbound from Sui. Now we see a crab and a monkey pushing in on this very sporadically placed T3, T1, this land facility nonsense. There's no, like, cohesion or anything. It's just... In the West, Exclusion Zone has been, been created by those fat boys. And now it's not looking good here for Team 1. They've lost a lot of that momentum, if not all of it. The nuke launches at the last moment before the nuke station gets taken offline. Artillery is inbound. Here comes two more shots. Oh, it kills off the Pigeon, kills off the nuke launcher. Where's the nuke going? It's going to the west here for Shiv's base. Did he build an SMD? Yes. Is it loaded? Also, yes. And he's building an emissary because why not? So either that nuke lands short or it gets shot down. It does get shot down. Unfortunate, but it's either you launch it and it may get something destroyed or you don't launch it and it gets destroyed anyways. So might as well spend the mass that you use to make the artillery, not artillery, the nuke. Third artillery piece is online. What? Oh, they're just wondering about the pigeons being a little low. And then another artillery station has been started here by Just Q. How is Sui doing? Sui still hasn't teleported yet. I mean, the sooner he, he does it, maybe it'll relieve a little bit of the pressure, but there are two comms being fired at by artillery. So I don't know if Team 1's targeting them directly. Oh, no, they're targeting them directly, probably, just due to the fact that they can see them. And I feel like they'd be better served going somewhere else. The artillery maybe going after more power. Generators over here to the east. There is an artillery online for Pearl Spare, to be fair. But I don't know. I'm oh, sorry about that. I don't know if it would be good to go for those two commanders. 
And that shield for the Fat Boy trying to protect the Earthmeister and Dilly Dally. We see the shields are back online in the north. Missiles are out. That's a lot of missiles. That's a lot of missiles. And they all miss. Oh, how unfortunate for a little Sid Little. Is the comm going to teleport? Not yet. We do see, of course, the artillery targeting this position. What's it trying to shoot at? Uh, there's the shot. Looks like it's going for the dual artillery pieces here for Flying Pancake. Artillery landing. Pigeons coming offline. How is the eco? Eco's for the Pigeon side of things is fine. But it's, again, like I said, slowly being eaten away. These two comms are being heavily focused. Which is good, because that means they're not firing on everything else for Team 2. Bad, because that's two comms that are underneath that same shield uh, superstructure there. And uh, one goes up, the other one will probably go up soon after. The game has slowed down to negative one, which is very rare even in replay. I mean, not rare in game, but rare in replays just because it's usually zero at a minimum but you can look at this one two three four five six fat boys versus two they've spread out and they are just gonna push i think at this point your is gonna just take whatever he can get out of those fat boys and call it a day essentially it's a war of attrition at this point dilly dally sitting out of shield coverage not a good place to stand there bud air shields back online and now the main shield back online now it looks like the artillery is focusing this group of shields down there is the comm going to teleport? No, the comm still hasn't even decided to teleport. And those fat boys are getting a little bit of mileage. Now there's a satellite online here for Lil Sid Little. And one of those fat boys are down. The second one is about to go down. There is a crab here. It will kill this Colossus, but not before that fat boy is dead. There goes the fat boy. The fat boy over here is down. So three of the five are down. There's so much mass on the map from the everything that's happened. Artillery's still raining in on this position. Fat Boy Shield's trying to assist. Most of the little builds an experimental. What is it? Is it just another Fat Boy? No, it's another satellite. That's another satellite. So that's two satellites, three satellites in total for Team 1. Uh, a little bit sparse on shielding. Definitely needs more, but it is being heavily assisted. So I guess I'll give them a little bit pass. But Swee has been defeated by Little Sid. Little, he teleports in going for... I don't even know what the heck he was going for, but he teleports into here. And that is the first death of the game. 48 minutes on the clock. And it's a no-share game, or share until death at least. Ooh, that is not good for Team 2. They just lost A, their highest rated player, and B, they didn't get anything out of it. I don't know why they went for that. I don't know why they went for the... Those, and those look like another player on Team 2 is killed off. And two of them killed off, excuse me, by the artillery and uh, satellites of team one and that is a double kill for team one full no share share ups and that is the last for player remaining now here for team two's Perispera. and look at this void on the western side of the map now at this point i think it's time to speed up because it is not uh, looking good for team two in general artillery trying to pierce shooting gets a little bit of stuff destroyed but not much and it looks like he just goes, nah, I'm good. I don't want to die. See you. Bye. And Team 1 wins the game without incurring a fatality, which means that is a flawless game for Team 1. 49 minutes, 21 seconds on the clock here. MVP for me. Ooh, I feel like it was really two shining stars for Team 1. There was Lewis the Little, who did a very good job on the western side. And then Flying Pancake, who did a very good job on the eastern side. Now, of course, the air... Wasn't really engaged, but it did look like at one point there was a fight that I possibly missed, so apologies for that. And just Q came out on top. But at the end of the day, it just came down to the fact that Lil Little had a nice little engagement with Sweet. He went after this. Maybe had he gone after this position, it would have been better. There are co Oh, there's a lot of PD, that would be fair. Yeah, there really wasn't a good target. Could have gone at... Uh, no, uh, yeah, it just really... There's no target to go after with that uh, Telemazer Commander. Maybe, maybe had they known about Little Sid Little's position, maybe could have gone after that. Those 
T2PDs would be a little bit slow to taking stuff out, but just a little bit, not too much. But again, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I didn't really pick an MVP. There were two players that did very well, but just I couldn't really pick one way or the other. So let me know down in the comments who you would pick for MVP. Thank you so very much for watching, of course, to the very end of the video. And I will see all of you in the next one.